Hey guys, uh, so I got one more video on the docket for this evening. Um, I've been working on this for a little while now. I'm sure you all have seen, or I hope you have seen, if not, well, here we go. There's this really cool cart reader made by a person who goes by the handle Sani. Um, it's portable, if you can't tell from this monstrosity here. Uh, this is mine mine. Uh, this is the one that I made using his designs here. It's got a couple modifications including these two Cherry MX buttons because I like the bigger buttons and I like the click. Uh, I've also got like a, a battery gauge on here. You click that you can see how much charge you have left, give or take. Uh, it's just kind of thrown in there. Uh, it runs off an 18650, which is kind of the inspiration for the other one that I've been working on. But it's super cool. You turn it on, you can navigate the menus with this. Of course, it doesn't have an SD card in it, so it's going to give an error. But I looked at this, I looked at the plans he released, and I decided, hey, you know, I can make my own. So I did, and I made this. It's significantly smaller, and I've been tinkering with this. This is my actual first design. I made it significantly thinner, and this works perfectly as is. Uh, I even added another battery gauge like this one, except this one has a voltage readout. Let me turn off the light so you can see a little bit better. Uh, this battery is at about half charge, give or take. And it's a really small battery, so it's not like I get a whole lot of life out of it. Um, but... Yeah, I, I really like this thing, and this was originally designed to use an 18650, but I cut it down because, I don't know, I was just tinkering with it, seeing what works, what doesn't work, and I actually really like this design. Uh, but before I move on, I ended up making this one, and I made another video for this. In the video, I don't have the 3D printed case, and I don't think I ever actually uploaded the, the schematic for this or the STL rather, and um, remind me, I'll go do that after this video. And this one works pretty good too. Uh, I do gotta make a few small adjustments because it's a little bit tighter on the buttons here. Uh, but of course, my readers only work with Game Boy and uh, Game Boy Advanced cartridges. There's no um, Super Nintendo or Nintendo or anything. Uh, but that was something I'd hope to remedy eventually in the future. And this is also 18650 powered. But after I made this, I went back, started tinkering with this, and then realized that, hey, this works with a significantly smaller battery. So that leads me to the project for this evening. I've got this PCB here, and this is just about as small as I could make this thing. I honestly don't think... I mean, if it can get smaller, I have no idea how. Um, but I designed this so that this is actually two PCBs here, and you just break it off. This will go on the bottom here to make the smallest reader, I dare say the smallest portable reader in the world. Uh, at least until someone proves me wrong or until I make another one. Uh, my buddy HDR make some super small cartridge readers as well. They're like literally the size of the the physical interface here. And they're super cool, but his require being plugged into a computer, whereas these don't. So I'm going to go ahead and try to assemble this. You need quite a few things here. Uh, first and foremost, you need one of these Arduino Pro Mega Embed modules, Mega 2560 Pro Embed. Um, you can pick these up on AliExpress for like, I don't know, like eight bucks a pop, give or take. They're pretty cheap. Uh, I'd recommend them over the uh, full-size ones, because uh, take a look, this black PCB on here is the full-size version. And this is literally a third the size, with 100% the same functionality. I, I mean, it's a different footprint, obviously, because it's a lot smaller, but all of the I.O. is there. Super cool. Anyway, so I designed this one, unlike my previous ones, in two PCBs, because the idea is 
this will have this will be socketed and you can replace it with um, I don't know, a Super Nintendo reader or uh, the, the the flash breakout boards whatever I of course haven't actually made those yet so that's a feature to come but at least it supports it unlike my other ones so I'm gonna go ahead and get started on assembling this uh, even though these snap off you still probably want to file or sand that down I'll, I'll do that later uh, let's see if I can get this assembled uh, first let's do these resistors here so I designed this one to use as many um, through hole parts as possible or modules instead of surface mount and I keep forgetting I'm sorry I keep forgetting to put a new footprint on here so you can use through hole resistors personally I don't mind doing the surface mount stuff I think it's super easy but I get that not everyone agrees with that and uh, you know it's it's not like I don't have the room there's enough room on here now that I've split it up into two PCBs there's plenty of a uh, empty space, but ooh, that's kind of gross. Sorry, there's a bunch of flux residue on my tweezers. But let's get these soldered down first. And sorry for the weird camera angle, I broke my camera mount a little while ago and I've been putting off fixing it. And uh, as time goes by, I find it's becoming less desk camera and more crotch camera. Hopefully I'll have that fixed pretty soon. At least for my sake. I'm sure some of y'all are into that, but I ain't. So these just go right here. Do add some extra solder to that pad. There we go. Just do these one side at a time. And again, I got these in that super cool JLC PCB matte black finish. I'm really digging that finish right now. Aside from the whole, you know, ooh, I didn't get that soldered down very good. Uh, aside from the fact that cleaning them is kind of difficult. I'm not having a good time with this. Which I guess is why bigger pads are uh, on the list. Oh, both of those are soldered. That's good. Okay. So, now that we've got that down, I designed this to use either the Cherry MX chalk style and I I actually went out of my way to fix this pad and then I used the old one that is wrong here and the one of the holes for the switch is a little bit off you can see that contact is bent just to fit it still works it's just kind of a hassle to get that in there And I do actually have a fixed footprint. I just didn't use it because I made a mistake. Uh, that being said, I do plan on sharing the files for this, assuming it works. But I'm going to be ordering another one of these uh, before I share them. Because I want to make sure that the things I planned on fixing actually get fixed. Um, and I did this kind of weird in that I plan on having the Arduino as close or as flush as possible the bottom of the board so I gotta use my flush cutters even on these pins here and I'm worried about that middle one because there's a hole in the switch. <laughs> yeah.
it should be fine. That's not something you want to do on your keyboard, but it should be fine here. Okay. And it's still clicking fine and everything, hopefully. Okay. Next is the other switch. And yeah, I feel like even though I, uh, even though this board is like a, a step in the right direction, I used all the wrong footprints, so the holes are in the wrong spots, and I don't know, it's just, it's super frustrating. You put so much work into something and then you make a stupid mistake. Yeah. Okay. I'm satisfied that that's flush. Both of those are. And you gotta be real careful when using these flush cutters because these pins will fly off at Mach 5. And uh, you know, if you're if you're planning on using your eyes for anything. These things will be happy to introduce themselves to them. Okay, cool. I hate that, but such is life. Okay. Next up, I need some switches. Oh, and I thought I had them already set out. Just in case, I grabbed my baggie. There we go. And these are just some generic switches I picked up from uh, AliExpress here. It's like a dollar for a pack of 50 or something stupid like that. I love them. Okay. See if I can solder both of these at the same time. So because these are through hole components, I'm just going to do the middle pin on each of them. Oops. Picked it up way too soon. Here I am trying to save time and it's actually going to cost me more time in the long run. There we go. Alright, so once you've got that one pin soldered down to hold it, I like to pick it up and loosen that pin and push down at the same time to make sure it's nice and flush, seated fully. Then you can go back and do the rest of the pins. And do that first one again just for good measure. All right. And shit. <laughs> I just did those upside down. Oh well, such is life. Just gonna try and desolder this. The switch should go on the same side as the um, buttons here. Probably going to have to get some flux for this too. At the very least trim my weight. Well, you know what would be good for this? A solder sucker. That would work 
perfectly. This is working pretty good though, so I'll keep doing this. One more pin. Perfect. Now, do this the right way, hopefully. That's not going to work. All right, there we go. Now it's on the right side. That's okay, I didn't mess up. I was just showing you guys how not to do it. And how to uh, undo when you do it the wrong way. Doesn't have to be perfect, especially because I'm about to go over these again. But same as same deal as the uh, switches here. I'm gonna start with this one because this one's not burning my. F oh, yeah, it is. We'll come back to that because those are super hot. Um, next up, I need to do the voltage regulator, and I'm pretty sure this is the three volt regulator which is the inside one right here. Oh, and I didn't label this. Oh wait, yeah I did. This is out, that's in. So it is like this. Only problem is that's gonna be a pain in the butt to solder because I still have to get to these pins here. Hmm, I should have moved that down more. I was thinking it would end up being like that. Maybe. You know, maybe I'll solder that afterwards. It should be fine. So I want to have it like that. Oh, but I don't know how to do that. So anyway, let me get back to this here. On this voltage regulator, there's three pins. The left one is voltage out, middle ground, right one voltage in. Uh, this is a step down, or it should be a step down regulator. And the V out, voltage out, should be 3.3 volts, which if we look on the silk screen here is this one closer to the middle. And the pin closest to the middle is the output and we want to make sure the output hmm there's got to be a better way to do this hang on I think I know I'm gonna cut this plastic thing off And uh, that hit me right in the nose. That was cool. So be careful with this. There we go. Now, 
going to take one of my sockets here. And get one of these out. There we go. I'll set this in here. So I have something holding those in the right place. Then, I'll take my iron and try and move it down. Like that. So, now I can do it that way, that'll be good, let me just trim these off, so I'm probably going to have some trouble when it comes to, oops, sorry, off the screen there. Also probably going to have to take a break for a little bit, pretty soon, because this camera overheats. Alright, see if we can get that soldered down, preferably straight. I'll do one and then see if I can straighten it and do the rest. Actually, that worked out perfectly. Don't want to spend too much time on those. Because it'll start melting on top here. Again, as flush as possible. Cool. Let's do the five volt one. Oh, and this one doesn't have pins. That's all right. Actually, probably going to end up doing that one backwards. Or can I do it? Yeah, I could do it that way. I need some bent pins. So I will come back to that. I'm going to go ahead and trim these now. feels nice and flush. Alright, I'm gonna go grab some uh, pins to solder this. I'll be back in a few minutes here. I'm, well, I guess it'll be a few seconds for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the videos, let my camera cool down for a little bit, and uh, while that's cooling down I'm gonna clean up some of the flux residue and put down some cap down just for insulation, just in case. And uh, I'll be back in just a sec here. All right, it's been a few minutes. I cleaned up my work area a little bit. I cleaned up the work piece a little bit too. Um, I grabbed some zip ties, so hopefully the phone will be able to hang on for the rest of this video. And I guess we'll pick up where I left off. I just added a little bit of Kapton tape to the bottom here to, to insulate it against this board because eventually I'm going to be soldering this on like that flush. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get back to this piece here. 
I've got just in my parts bin, of course, all this angled header pin. I'm just going to break off a small bit of three here. And can I do this this way? Will that work? Voltage out is on the left. Yeah. Or on the right, excuse me. I swear I know my uh, left from my right. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this. That's not going to work. I shouldn't need it. I'm going to solder that to that. I heard a frightening click from my phone just now. You know, the most annoying thing about that broken bracket is that it's been broken for, like, two months now. And it's been fine until now. Don't really know what changed. Well, actually, that's untrue. I know exactly what changed. I noticed it drooping, so I replaced the duct tape that was holding it together. And apparently this new duct tape isn't as resilient as the old duct tape. But that's alright. I'll... I mean, the bracket is 3D printed. I could just print another one. It's not that big a deal. I was just thinking, maybe it's time to actually engineer a new bracket or something. Or maybe come up with a solution that isn't kludged together like this is, because I don't know if you guys have seen the picture I, I posted on um, Esoteric Sean's Discord. My filming rig consists of a phone tripod, cannibalized and attached to a 3D printed bracket which is attached to a uh, lamp. And, you know, quite frankly, it works great until I, um, I broke it. But until then, it was working great. Okay. enough. Let's clean that up a little bit. It appears this cotton swab is no longer wet. So let's get a new one. And again, this is just isopropyl alcohol. Nothing fancy. just laid it down crooked. I shouldn't need that space that bad, but just in case. Straighten it out so there's no crease. And then I'm going to go ahead and overlap one more piece just to make sure everything is covered. Beautiful. Okay. Now, we move on to the Arduino, I think. So the plan is to use these sockets here, and along this side there's actually 21 pins, and I couldn't find dual row 
21 pin socket so I'm just using a 20 pin it shouldn't matter because this last pin right here is the voltage in pin in case you're using a high voltage power source like 12 volts which I am not so I think I'm good to go ahead and ignore that and I'm going to I guess I'm gonna go ahead and solder that now Q soldering montage just gonna do one pin, pick it up, make sure that's nice and flush. Do a pin on the opposite side here. Pick it up, make sure it's flush. And I should be good to go to just do the rest. Now, I've already flashed this Arduino with the uh, software. I highly recommend you do the same uh, because I actually ordered two of these Arduinos. I was planning on building the second one and I'm glad I ordered two because one of them came defective. Unfortunately I didn't even bother checking until well after I had received them so I don't know which is which so I can't get my money back. But such as life I guess at the very least they're super cheap and I might be able to fix it I think the defective one that I ordered I think it's just the flash chip or the the serial converter chip so I might be able to flash it with the ICSP pins the in circuit serial programming might don't know haven't really played with it and I have absolutely no idea if this is gonna work I didn't see any of the like stackable header pins in this size either or I'd be using those because these pins are not very long which is why it needs to be so flush Come on. There we go. Before I move on to the next, I'm going to do a test fit. Oh, see, that doesn't fit. I might be able to make it work. I'll probably be able to make it work. But I don't like it. I think I need to make these holes bigger. Because the problem is, like, the solder is, like, wicking up the sides. because I used as much solder as I should on a joint like this which unfortunately is gonna bite me in the ass a little bit better. Uh, it's gonna have to work. The question is, should I solder this down now or we'll put the rest of them in first? Uh, I'm gonna put the rest of them in first. Alright, so once you've got that done, Gotta use your 
shorter pins, and I forget how long this is, but this is actually the proper length for this side. I want to say it's like 16 pins. Feel free to correct me, though I'll probably end up posting a bill of materials anyway, and then you won't have to correct me. But, you know. Okay. And by 16, of course, I mean 2 by 16. Not just 16 total. I'm trying to use a little bit less solder on this side. But it's not exactly going to plan. That's okay, we don't need no stinking plan. down, do a quick test fit. I see that side fits so much better. Until you insert everything. Uh oh. I might end up like squeezing this in my vise or something. Maybe it'll coerce parts to go together. Alright, now you need two 2x6 two pieces. Let's see if I can do both simultaneously here. I don't recall if, because uh, one of these is a data, ooh, what the hell happened there? Okay, one of these is a data I.O., the other is the programming pins. I don't recall if the programming pins are uh, used for anything. But, I mean, it's always, I'd rather add them and not need them than have to go back and add them later. Test fit. And yeah, there's probably a better way to do this, but I'm going to resort to violence. So I'm going to take my vise here, just an itty bitty one. And yes, it does have glasses in it right now. I'm waiting for my JB weld to set on my ghetto repair there. Should be good enough to take them out now, though. Okay. So, the plan... I'm just going to squeeze it. Not too tight. Tight enough to break something, though. There we go. That's 
probably not the best way to do that, but you don't watch this channel for the best way to do things, do you? No, I'm kidding. I do try and make some videos like that. Now, more soldering. And the goal here is to add too much solder. That way I ensure that it penetrates the hole there and gets down, wraps around the pin. And yes, I am getting really close to these voltage regulators. Should be okay. Oops, I didn't have to add solder to those last holes. Oh well. Already done. I'm just going to go over them all again real quick. Make sure that the solder is both leveled off and soaked in fully. And hopefully that worked. The bigger the gob, the better the jab in this case. Doing on time. Okay. Okay. I suppose one of the benefits of uh, having the pins this short already is that you don't really have to trim them. You know, silver lining. Okay. Hope I didn't forget anything, because that's not coming off. Alright. Um, I guess... Ow, that's hot. Let's add this LED now. So I just made this in standard pin headers here. The long pin on the LED, there's four pins. The longest one is the voltage because these are common anode or cath... I don't know. Whatever it is. Whatever the... the each color has a different ground. So I'm going to try and bend that, perfect, like that. And solder that down. Oh, 
Now, of course, you don't need an LED if you don't want. It'd be no fun, but perfectly acceptable. Trim these leads now. This part doesn't have to be flush, but... Oops. I don't know where that went. Alright, and I guess this is a good spot to take a quick break, let my soldering iron cool down a little bit, it's getting pretty warm there, and uh, let the camera cool down. I'm going to go ahead and clean up all this extra flux, but when I get back we'll solder on the TP4056, the memory card reader, and the screen, and the battery, and then we got to build this part and we should be good to go. Alright, it hasn't been as long as it should but I'm impatient and screw it. I think I can finish this up pretty quickly. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four components left and I should be able to test it out. First thing I need to do the screen here uh, it looks like there's some new screens coming out of China. These have a black PCB instead of the blue PCB of the uh, older ones here. I don't know if there's a difference. Hopefully not. They have the same pinout and the same specs, so in theory they're the same. But either way, uh, I still included this little jumper here uh, in case yours is different for some reason. So the first pin on here is ground, which means we want to short it to the bottom. And then the second pin is VCC, which means we want to short it to the top there. Come on. There we go. And then that'll drop right in there and you can solder it from the bottom. Or it'll fall right through that too. Try that out. Whoops. Yeah, it looks good. These pins are weird. Looks like there's not a lot of meat to solder onto on the PCB. I don't know if I'm just imagining it or what. Okay, these also have to be flush. Ow. They kind of hurt when they fly off. I'll try and clean that up. Guess that dried out too. Alright. There we go, that ain't too bad. Going to insulate that real quick. Just gonna slice off a small 
little piece of capstone. Put that right there. And now I need to solder on the US or the TP4056 module. And Balance that on that. Not really. There's no real good way to solder this. Because it's, it's. It's. I don't know. It's like a top. I guess let's try that. Hope for the best. That's awful. Okay, that worked. So I'll try the opposite corner now. You know, in hindsight, I really don't like this whole whoops through hole board to board surface mount nonsense really should be using some pins or something But I suppose if it works, you know, don't fix it. Hopefully, all is well. I'm just going to grab the multimeter and double check that one. If I can figure out where I put it. Just kidding. I found it. Okay. So, it's the battery minus. So that should connect up to that, which indeed it does. And then the battery plus, which should connect up to that and that. And then the out should connect up to the ground on the switch here when it's on. I don't think that'll work. No. Oh, it'll connect up to the ground here. Yes! And just double checking, that's not shorted. Oh, it is! Oh wait, it's on. Duh. Off. Perf well, shouldn't be showing very high resistance, but it's probably fine. Okay, cool. Two more things here. Before I even solder on the memory card reader, I'm going to solder on... There it is. A battery connector. I ordered some batteries for this thing, well, a battery, really, and uh, it has not come here yet. So I'm just going to use a generic one, and a battery connector for now. Well, I'll, I'll probably be using this battery connector when I get everything assembled, but 
until I've got the battery and know exactly ooh, whoops. Until I got the battery and know exactly what I'm doing with it. I'm just gonna use this and leave it nice and long. Okay. Put that aside. Drop my cap on tape. Grab the battery I planned on using. And hope it works. <gasps> it does! SD error! Perfect! Oh man, that is beautiful. Off. Okay, unplug that. Go back to soldering here. So next up, I need to solder on an SD reader, and I had thought I ordered some, but apparently I didn't. So we're going to cannibalize some parts here. And this is to go on like that, upside down, which means I need to flip this connector around. I had planned this. This wasn't an accident. I promise. Unlike many of the other components so far, I'm just going to add some solder to these. And this is probably going to be easier if I just break it off. That's interesting. Not quite what I intended for, but... I'm going to set the soldering iron down before I poke my eye out. So, it's actually a lot more difficult than it needs to be to save these plas or these header pins, and I have a whole shitload of them, so I'm not going to. I'm going to desolder them. Hopefully that's the end of that. Though I did kind of expect them to fall out when I did that. Okay. One. It's probably an easier way to do this. If so, let me know. Love to uh, try it out. There we go. Now I need, I'm going to try, I'm going to try my flux pin, because that's a lot easier to clean up. Ooh, that was a lot of flux. Okay. It's like we're uh, cooking bacon or something. never get the hang of this flex pen and it's not really working for me Did that work I think that worked I pulled that up to the light yeah it did for all except ground
There we go. Ground's good now. Wipe this off. The nice thing about the Flux pen, when it does work, is uh, that it's super easy to clean up. Unlike the paste Flux I have. Okay. Set that aside. Now this needs to go on this way. Yes. So, I need header pins, oh, which I do have. So, again, you can just buy these in bulk on AliExpress or whatever. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do red just because I already started breaking off that. I need that many. And of course, ground isn't actually clear. So I'm going to try to do this without burning myself. Or ruining my silicone mat. There we go. Well, ground's going to be a little bit shorter than the rest, but oh well. Just before I solder that, double check. It goes on there, and I labeled all the pins on the board the same, so yeah. That'll be good. If you guys are following along, like you're making your own, and you find that you're having a hard time soldering to this stupid thing, it's not just you. This this um, card reader is super. Uh, I don't I don't know the word I'm thinking of, but it's very. Um, it's got a lot of thermal mass to it. It's just very difficult to solder to just soaks up the heat and eh, I don't like that what do you think at an angle nah I don't like that either come on I like that. Okay. This is like the opposite of all my other readers here, where the um, memory card module is socketed. <laughs> and, uh, well, actually, never mind. I guess just the memory card reader is socketed on my other readers. Uh, I'm going to steal the SD card out of this one here, plug it back into my battery, wherever I put that, there it is. Boot it up, oh yes, beautiful. And I'll just leave that for now.
whatever. It's not hurting anyone. All right, last step. This is the cartridge reader. Uh, my buddy HDR designed or made this footprint here. It actually has the holes for the locating pins in the cart reader, but it's so tight that you just pop it in there and it wants to stay. It's not actually soldered down yet, uh, but trust me, it does fit. Just line it up, push it down, good to go. And I'm going to go ahead and start soldering this. I'm probably going to need flux to do it. You know what? I'm not even going to try. I know I need flux. It'll make my life so much easier. Plus, this thing's super easy to clean. It's its own little module. Bigger the gob, better the job. Something like that. Okay. And I know in one of my other videos, one of you guys was super concerned about this. And trust me, I will clean up the flux. I always do. I'm just not going to film the 20 minutes of me sitting here cleaning up flux. But this just turns out so much nicer with flux. Okay. I think we're good. I need to remove some extra solder, though. the ribbon or the braid before you remove the iron otherwise it gets stuck I'm just gonna go over these pins one more time here make sure there's no shorts and everything's nice and happy he says one more time and he does it twice oh well that looks beautiful Let's do these anchor pins as well. I think those would benefit from having some flux. That soak in. That's a lot of solder. It's fine though. It's nice and flush. Oops. There we go. Okay. Next up. Did I? I did accidentally plugged one of these holes. Luckily, there's still a ton of flux. Alright, now I'm going to get this soldered down. So the easiest way to do this, I'm just going to use the pins that came with the Arduino. But you can use single row pins if you want. But just enter these, or insert these rather. And do mind that there's the extra pin on this side. And once you've got all four sets inserted, you can line that up. Oh! Shit, I fucked up. I don't know how to fix that either. Whoopsie doodle. So, you're going to want to solder these pins before you solder the port on. Alternatively, 
Don't solder that one. I don't think it's needed for this module. I'll uh, double check that later, I guess. And if my camera cuts out, because we're going on 24 minutes in this section here, I'll uh, continue after I finish soldering these. Actually, you know what? I'll pause while I solder these. I'll be back. Uh, I'm going to solder these and clean up all the flux. I'll be back. Ladies, gentlemen, other, we're in the final run here. Uh, I got this all soldered down. I ended up clean uh, snipping all of these and then going over them with the soldering iron again so that there's no sharp edges. You have to snip these side down, otherwise it'll get in the way of carts. And I just put a little piece of Kapton tape over it just to ensure that there's no rubbing and scraping. Uh, and I did get this all cleaned up. There's a shitload of flux on here. I mean, I only have myself to blame for that, but such is life. Um, and I did check the schematic. That is definitely not needed, so don't worry about it if you mess up the same way I did. And in hindsight, I shouldn't have soldered every single pin, but only the pins I needed. Um, on future PCB revisions, I'm going to mark those out on the silk screen so that you can actually see which pins you need instead of just going ham or trying to guess. Uh, because you only need like this many right here and then like a couple right here. So I don't know. And, and, and I guess maybe some in the corners just to make sure it's nice and even. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add this in. This is going to be my battery gauge here. Uh, both sides used to be the same, but I snipped this side off so it would fit a little bit better because the plan is to st uh, stick it right there. Uh, but to do so, I need to trim these wires way the hell down. Uh, but the plan is to feed off of these voltage regulators right here for power and then solder the yellow wire just right to the battery sense. Um, so I'm going to separate these and then red, I think that will give me plenty of space. So I'm going to snip these right here. Oh, what do I do with my wire cutters? I lost them. I mean, I didn't really, because they're somewhere. I haven't actually gone anywhere with them. Oh, yeah. They're in here. I started putting things away, because I thought I was done. And then I found the battery gauge and went, Oh, I can't believe I forgot. Okay. So... those stripped down. Tin them up. And then find the tweezers that I already put away. Oh, what the hell? Oh, I didn't put them away. Why didn't you guys say anything? They're right here. Okay. My cat's getting anxious for me to finish because it's dinner time. Alright, so I'm going to solder the ground first. I'm just going to solder that right to the voltage regulator. And then I'm going to solder the red to the V out. And before I continue, I'm just going to make sure that everything actually fits the way I'm thinking it will. Yeah. I don't mind that these wires stick up a little. I figure a little bit of slack's better than no slack. Okay. And then I'm going to wrap this around. And solder that down there, but I'm going to cut it just a little long, just in case. Worst case scenario, I can always replace the wire. But that 
should be good. I'll have to redo that um, when I get my actual battery so I'm not really paying too close attention to how good of a job I did with that. Take these extra wires, put them aside. And stick this down. I found in my toolbox some uh, Gorilla Tape. I usually just use 3M VHB. And this is, to be honest, probably the exact same stuff, just with a different brand. But, try it out, see how it works. And, since I know you weirdos like this shit, I waited till I was back to uh, peel that. And this, maybe, there we go. And we've got a special treat, one of my other projects here I'm going to be using to power this. I'm going to put my uh, cart reader back in there, just snaps in. And then this is off, yes. This meter is set to 3.7 volts. Got it plugged in there and turn it on. So interesting that this is showing 3.56, but I don't know which one's off or if there's some weirdness because it's running through the TP4056. But nonetheless, close enough. Oh, okay. Let's turn that off. Oops. Turn that off. Switch it over to Game Boy Color mode. Actually, switch that back on. I'm going to double check it's actually uh, in the right voltage. Make sure my labels are correct before I plug any carts into this thing. So I don't know where the volt rail is. Of course it's covered. Oh, I can check that. Okay. So meter set to volts. It's going to be negative because I have the probes backwards, but that's all right. So sweet, 5 volts in Game Boy Color mode, that is perfect. And then in Game Boy Advanced mode, it should be 3 volts, or 3.3 rather. Perfect! Yes! Okay. Right. Oops. I unplugged one of my leads here. So I'm testing two things at once, really. Plug that in. See how much current this thing draws. SD error. What's going on? There we go. I don't know. Weird glitch. Game Boy, Game Boy Color. So I'll turn that light off. Maybe you can see this a little bit better. I did recognize it, which is excellent. We will go ahead and try and get a dump. Maybe. Okay, there it goes. So that's interesting. I had no idea how much power this thing actually used while it was dumping. And uh, that might be a bad rip. Yeah. Not sure what happened there. But it's using a little bit more than I thought. And for some reason, it's not reading the game. But I'll unplug it, plug it back in. Try again. Hmm. Because the I.O. LED should be going. I don't know why it's giving me an error. It might just be this game. I might not like this game. Let me try... Oh! Whoops. Why didn't you guys tell me it was in Game Boy Advance mode? Let's try again. That looks better, I think, I hope. Yeah! 
There's a good read. Let's flip that off. Flip that back to Game Boy Advance mode. Try Pokemon Emerald here. And it came unplugged again when I put the cart down. I'll just set that down. I don't know why I'm holding it. Game Boy Advance. So it recognizes Pokemon Emerald. Perfect. Read Rome. Ah, oh, yes. So of course the idea is to have this battery powered, but like I said, I did order batteries for this. I have no idea where they are. I'm sure they'll get here eventually. Um, I'll go ahead and upload the schematic for this after I make some changes, so it's not going to be right away. It's probably going to be, actually probably going to be a few months because I want to order some PCBs and double check that everything I changed is correct and proper. At the very least, I want to fix the switch footprint. I'm thinking I might want to move these voltage regulators, but I'm not really sure on that one yet. Um, I don't like them there, but there's no real other place to put them except on the bottom. Eh, maybe they'll fit better on the bottom. And, oh yeah, I, gotta, I want to fix the silk screen so that you know which pins to use instead of uh, just soldering them all. And, um, well, yeah. Otherwise, I am just beyond pleased with this thing so far. Just want to make sure I get a good dump before I call it an evening. <laughs> I suppose one could say that about uh, any day, really. But I want to make sure this cart reader does good. Uh, I'm going to put some keycaps on those switches so they're not just bare switches, but... I haven't seen what I have left over yet. If I keep up with my pattern, it would be the F7 and F8 keys, but I might just do something different. Mix it up a little. I don't have a full set of keyboard keys to choose from. I just have what, what I didn't use when I built my Helix keyboard. But there's still a ton of extra keys. And oh, failed to open ROM. That's a new one. and incredibly disappointing. Oops. We'll try one more time before I call it an evening. It could also be this power supply. I know this power supply is noisy as fuck. And I don't know how much that's going to affect this. Um, there really should be some more filtering and capacitors and shit on this. So if this doesn't work again, I'll try it with the battery just to double check. But so far, I'm super pleased with this. Just the, the form factor. It's so small. Compare... These, oh, I'll put that over here so you can see it a little bit better. These have the same features. This is like literally four times the size and about the same thickness. Um, of course, this is going to get bigger once you add a different cart shield to it, like if you're using N64, or Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, or whatever. And I haven't actually made those cart shields yet, but I do plan to eventually. I hope. It'll be a when I get around to it thing. Um, but even if I don't make them, the footprint I used is public. I actually got it from a company called Robot Din or Robot Dyn or R O B O T D Y N. Uh, it was Eagle, but I converted it over to KeyCAD, or you could just use Eagle, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then you can make your own footprint using Sani's. Um, he has a spreadsheet on his GitHub with all the wiring, so you can make your own uh, shield if you want 
just keep in mind if you're using Nintendo 6 or not Nintendo 64 excuse me Super Nintendo you want to make sure you add the extra goodies like the the signal generator and the uh, it's under here but there's a little microcontroller that you need to rip certain carts and look at that got a successful dump let's read the save just for good measure yes alright well guys that's my uh, super cool new reader I am I'm just super stoked about this thing I, I, I don't know what else to say um, you have any questions hit me up in the comments uh, otherwise, I think it went over everything in the video. I know it's a long one, and I apologize for that. And it is going to take me literally all night to upload, and then some. But for you guys, it's worth it. I swear. Um, anyway, keep on being awesome. Have a good night.